Hello, I'm Bishop Peggy Johnson, and I'd like to read Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for your word. It is manna for our souls. So bread from heaven, bread from heaven, feed us till we want no more, and send us out into your world and feed your lonely world. And now in spite of me or through me, preach your word to your people. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The gospel text for Trinity Sunday is none other than the famous Great Commission of Jesus Christ. Go, therefore, and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Jesus is sending you out as his mandate for all followers. Making disciples is the main goal of the church. And on Trinity Sunday, we are reminded of the power of the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son to accomplish this work. This is why all your churches were established in the first place, right? To preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to make disciples. This is what we should always be doing and never get distracted. And it's my duty as your bishop to keep the main thing the main thing. And friends, this is the main thing. And so I'd like to talk about this today on this Our Trinity Sunday. And I'm going to be using three words. Go, so, and lo. First, this idea of go. The word go is the first word in the Great Commission. Those are the first two letters of the word gospel, too. It's impossible to keep it for yourself if you truly have experienced the saving power of Christ in your life. You go and tell. Forgiveness, new spiritual life, the promise of heaven. That's fantastic news the world needs to know. The church alone brings these everlasting promises to the world. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7, is the account of some lepers who were starving to death during the siege of Jerusalem. The Syrian army camped around the city and did not allow food to come in or people to go out. Lepers were ostracized because of their contagious skin disease. So they were desperate enough to go out to the camp of the Syrians to see if they could possibly get some help. They reasoned that they had nothing to lose since they were going to die anyway, and they might as well go out and see if the Syrians would give them mercy. So off they went to the camp of the enemy. Well, they were shocked to find that the enemy soldiers had vacated the premises, and they were able to help themselves to all kinds of food and riches, anything they wanted. After a while, they said to one another, What we are doing is wrong. This is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, we will be found guilty. Therefore, let us go. Let us go and tell the king's household. And this they did, and everyone got some food that day. We have more important news, friends, than where to find food. We have the spiritual bread of life in Jesus Christ that we should never keep a secret. Just as the leopards remind us, if we are silent, we will be found guilty. So where can you go and share the good news of Jesus Christ? Go where people are most separated from the love of God. When the stay-at-home orders are lifted, 
go to prisons and hospitals and nursing homes and to remote mission sites in the world. Go to young people and children and go to people that don't look like you. Go with the simple truth that in Christ there is life, abundant life, forgiveness of sins. Tell your story and don't forget to offer an invitation. Go takes on a whole new meaning right now during this pandemic. We can go to food banks and drop off food. We can go online with Facebook and YouTube with messages of salvation. We can go to our lawmakers by phone and cry out for the rights of people who are working in difficult places of employment right now with little protection or income. We can go and check on our lonely neighbors by email or by phone. The gospel message always has with it the gospel of love. And there's many ways we can go and spread the good news of love in word and in deed. So that's go. The second word is so. Like the King James Version, I like that the best in this particular passage because in the King James Great Commission, it emphasizes sowing the word of God the most. It says two times that we are to teach. We are to teach all nations, sow the word of God. We're supposed to tell everyone about God. We're to teach people to observe all that Christ has commanded. And in order to teach something, you first have to know about it, right? I remember one time I was volunteering at the Maryland School for the Blind to help a deaf-blind young person. And all she wanted to do was go ice skating. And they wanted volunteers to take her ice skating. And I was willing to do that, except... I didn't know how to ice skate, so I had to first go and learn how to ice skate so I could take her with me and that she could enjoy that activity. And so it is true with us Christians. If we're going to go and sow the Word, we've got to know the Word of God. We've got to be studying the Scriptures and learn what God is commanding us to do. Are you in Bible study? You can never stop learning from this book. The insights are many and deep, and the Holy Spirit speaks through the words of Scripture. And it can bring us real life-changing information, and it can speak to your situation right now as you study God's Word. So learn all you can, and go and sow the Word. The best way to make disciples is to teach. And that was one of Jesus' greatest ministries. They called him rabbi, which means teacher. We need to be like the sower in the parable of Matthew 13, who with great abandon tossed seeds of the word everywhere, on good ground and bad ground. Some of the sown seeds fell on the good soil and produced abundant crops, but some did not. Didn't matter. We were asked just to be like that sower, just to sow the word of God. It's God who does the increase, and God sends the rain and the sunshine. So teaching brings great joy because you are sharing the very heart of the ministry of Jesus Christ when you do. During COVID-19, we have many opportunities to teach and sow the Word of God through our Bible studies online. I've attended quite a few, and they're really good. I am thankful for the churches that are sowing the Word with a children's time each day, reading a religious children's book or, or telling a Bible story, story to the children. Some of our churches are continuing to hold youth group and teaching Bible studies to our young people through Zoom. Some are sowing the seed in many new and creative ways. This is a time like none other. So go sow. Find a way to sow the word of God. Our final word is low. In the King James Version of the Bible, it says low many times. But we don't say the word low too much in modern times. It's an old English expression, which is an abbreviation of the word look. The expression, lo and behold, literally means look and take a good long look. In the Christmas story, it says, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, the shepherds. That means look, <laughs> the angel showed up, you know. And when Jesus says, lo, I'm with you always, He's saying, look, take notice, 
pay attention. I, Jesus, am with you always. We often don't stop and look and take into account that Jesus was with us as we do his work and evangelism and teaching. Sometimes, sadly, we often just act like it's all on our shoulders and we push ahead in our own strength. And when we do that, sometimes we end up feeling overwhelmed and fearful and doubting and sometimes even apathy sets in. How many of our evangelism committees at church have a heaviness about them? And that's, I think, because sometimes we don't look around and see the Savior's power and presence that's with us to do this work. Evangelism is, is really important, but it's really, really hard. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the letter of Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He wrote this from a prison dungeon, a real stay-at-home order for sure, with none of the comforts of home except for offering that was sent by the Philippians. The empowering presence of Christ was strength for him as he continued his ministry even from a jail cell. So call upon the Lord, church. Call upon the Lord for help. Remind yourselves of the overcoming and all-powerful presence of Christ that is available to you as you do the work of the Lord. It's not easy. Persecutions and sacrifices are part of it all. But Jesus is there to help. We should also strive to be the presence of Christ for people in need. And when they look at you, may they see Jesus looking at them as you do the works of goodness in this world. Last summer, I went on a mission trip to Redbird Mission in Kentucky. As we were bringing in supplies one day, I heard a small child say, Look, Mom, Jesus is here. That was really a humbling, awesome thing to hear, because I'm far from being Jesus. But she was seeing these things coming in to help them, and, and she was feeling Jesus' presence as we were serving and may people see Jesus when they look at you as you do the work of Christ here in this church, here in the community, and everywhere in the world. Please, friends, be about the work of evangelism now and into the future when things are opened up again. And I'd like to close with a song <clears throat> that I wrote. It's entitled, Go So Low. Now this is a little corny, but it sums up everything. Go to everyone on earth, so the word, the holy word. Lo, the Lord will undergird, so the word and preach new birth. Go and do not be afraid, lo, the Savior meets your need, so the debt of sin is paid. And preach Christ as Lord indeed. Go so low, go so low, go so, go so. Amen. Thanks be to God.